Lightning over Folsom Field delayed the CU TCU football game tonight. Buffs opener of the season. CU says it is the first weather delay at Folsom since 2015. A lot of lightning with these storms, but not a whole lot of rain. So let's send things over to Danielle. It's all about location, 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 because around the Boulder area, there was lightning in the distance. But here downtown Denver, big fat raindrops coming across the city. This is our live camera overlooking downtown, and we've had quite the light show as well. You can kind of see the roads incredibly wet. We were watching this line of thunderstorms drop off the foothills into Larimer and Boulder County, now impacting much of the I-25 corridor as it charges off to the east and southeast. I just threw on the lightning tracker more than 50 strikes, but man, it feels like more when you go outside. You can just see by the coloring contours, the oranges, the reds that we have around Lakewood through Sheridan, Cherry Hills Village. That's where the heaviest rain showers are right now. And then also around I-76, a whole lot of lightning heading out to Brighton as well as Lock Bowie in through Platteville and Greeley along Highway 85. They're looking at some heavy rainfall coming through. We still have another about half hour, 45 minutes to go. These winds, they have been kicking up with this thunderstorm that has plowed across parts of the metro area on your Friday night. I'll be tracking the latest on this and a look ahead toward the holiday weekend when I see you in about 10 minutes. Thank you, Danielle. Denver police detectives under investigation for how she handled a domestic violence report that involved a woman who later ended up dead. Last month, police arrested the woman's boyfriend for her death. Now they're investigating whether officers could have intervened sooner. Last month, police found Elizabeth Hatless's body in the backyard of a home she shared with her boyfriend in North Denver. She and Travis Tuomi had lived there for years. Now he faces first degree murder charge. And our nine wants to know team has confirmed that Denver police detective and Anna Munoz is the suspect of an internal investigation. She was assigned to a case in May in which Hatless claimed Tuomi tried to strangle her several months earlier. The question now is whether Munoz adequately followed up on it. Tuomi is being held without bail and due in court November 21st. We have much more on this case at 9news.com. Police in Fort Collins trying to arrest a burglary suspect shot somebody else in the process. That man's in the hospital tonight. Police got a call about a disturbance at an apartment complex near LeMay Avenue and Stewart Street, not far off Prospect. Police say the person also had a warrant tied to a burglary case. When officers arrived, they say that man jumped off an apartment balcony. They stopped him outside, took him to the hospital for injuries from the jump. One of the other people inside the apartment had a gun. Police have not detailed what happened next, only that an officer shot that guy. Man's expected to survive. None of the officers was hurt. Riffenburg Elementary School had to go on lockdown while this happened. The Adams County coroner changed Elijah McLean's autopsy report sometime before prosecutors filed charges in his death. The coroner won't release the new report, saying it's confidential. Changes could have big impact since the coroner initially didn't say why McLean died after police held him down. And paramedics injected him with ketamine. McLean died three years ago. He was walking in Aurora when police stopped him, even though he did nothing wrong. Police put him in a carotid hold and paramedics injected him with ketamine. An autopsy a week after McLean died said his cause and manner of death was undetermined. Well, Colorado Public Radio was the first to report the coroner updated the autopsy because of grand jury testimony. That change could have some big implications for prosecuting the three officers and two paramedics charged in McLean's death. CPR is leading a lawsuit to make the public uh, the report public and Nine News is going to join that suit. Coming out of one global pandemic, there's another virus outbreak continuing to challenge public health leaders. Colorado's response to monkeypox is now expanding as more vaccine becomes available. Here's Nine News reporter Jennifer Meckles. About, I think today is four weeks and a day from when I first got my monkeypox vaccine. It's a two dose shot and Alex Buck just hit the 28 day window. So I got an email yesterday, which was my exactly four weeks after the shot um, from the state of Colorado saying a record say that you got your monkeypox vaccine a month ago. It's time to get your second shot. Most of the summer, supply has been very limited. The state was only offering first doses to the most at-risk people. Many were part of the LGBTQ community. All righty, just a little pinch. But today, that vaccine supply is bigger, and the eligibility pool is bigger, too. That includes anyone exposed to monkeypox in the last 14 days, anyone with multiple or previously unknown sexual partners in that time frame. Anyone or eligible any for or already using medications to prevent HIV or people recently diagnosed with certain STDs. You are really trying to ensure that the eligibility criteria was inclusive of anyone um, who was at highest risk or, you know, in a high risk setting 
um, regardless of sexual orientation and gender identity. Because again, it's not just in queer circles and people need to be aware of that for their own safety. Alex gets his second shot in just a few days. And I used to hate vaccines as a kid. I would dread my flu shot and I still don't love them, but I remember when I got my first COVID vaccine, even with this, I was like, yeah, I can't wait. Like I was so excited because it just felt like something I could actively do to keep myself safe. And that's a feeling we don't have very much these days, I feel like. Colorado reports 235 cases of mo monkeypox since May this year. Nine people have been hospitalized. Nobody has died. More than 9,800 people have gotten at least one vaccine dose already. You know, Jenny, sometimes I, I struggle to figure out, obviously, COVID impacts everything that we're talking about with monkeypox. And if COVID had never happened, would we talk about this less or would we be fixated on it even more? You know what I mean? Sure. And certainly the numbers of monkeypox are so drastically different than COVID, but they're also there they're happening and it's happening i think people don't realize and also thousands of people are getting these vaccines this is not a small thing here so yep yep but the context of covid to your point I, absolutely colors everything yep. all right jenny thank you police in aurora and the fbi are looking for a suspect who robbed a bank on tuesday then went back to rob it again yesterday this happened at the commerce bank off east colfax investigators say the man pulled a weapon demanded money during both robberies on Tuesday, he came in wearing a light blue security guard uniform. During yesterday's robbery, he was wearing a black and gray camouflage hoodie. Anyone with information about this very regular bandit is asked to call number on your screen, 303-629-7171. People living in a hotel in Denver being used as shelter say they're being forced out even sooner than expected. For two years, the Quality Inn near Spear and Zunai has housed people experiencing homelessness who are more at risk for COVID. The city says money for the shelter is running out. People who live there say last month the city told them that they'd have to move out by September 16th. Then just this week, they got new notices. Move outs are starting on the 6th. And they end on the 10th. The city says the phased approach is easier on the residents and the shelters they're expected to move to. If I had to go to this homeless shelter, I would, I would probably be dead in two months. I wouldn't be able to take it. I mean, my, there's no way. Residents met with the city and the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless this morning to talk about their options. The city says there's enough shelter space to give everyone a new place to stay, but most of it is in traditional group shelters, not private rooms. The race for Denver mayor now has two prominent names. Councilwoman Debbie Ortega is getting into the race to replace Mayor Michael Hancock. She said today that it's time for Denver to chart a new course. Ortega has been around for a while, always on city council, never in the lead job, 28 years on city council, the last 11 as an at-large city council member representing the whole city. She's viewed as one of the more centrist Democrats on city council. Earlier this year, Ortega notably voted against the renovations at DIA that are behind schedule and well over budget. Nine other candidates, mostly long shots, have filed to replace Mayor Hancock. The other big name in the race right now is Kelly Bruff, former head of the Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce. She's expected to be the favorite of big business interests. Other well-known names are expected to announce their campaigns for mayor soon. Labor Day weekend for the longest time meant big sales for stores and certainly car dealerships. But dealers' lots are still struggling to fill up with new cars. 9 News reporter Luis De Leon explains why. We start it up if you want. This lot in Englewood. No, it's just taxes based on where you register the vehicle. Would normally be a bit more filled up, especially with Labor Day weekend. It's probably not going to be uh, as big a retail week as as in the past. Jeff Silverberg is the GM here at John Elway Chevrolet. A few years ago, before COVID, he says he could have had between 400 and 500 new cars in the lot. Right now, I happen to have about 22 and that is the most I've had in months. Dealers say those issues stem from what you may have heard about before. Well, you know, with the chip shortage, it depends. Um, the more bells and whistles you get on a vehicle today, the more chips clearly that it's gonna need. And there in is your problem. Uh, but you got the charging port, so it's a hybrid. A national auto industry forecast last month found that 55% of vehicles are being sold within 10 days of getting to a dealer. That report also says the lack of supply is allowing manufacturers to walk back discounts. Yeah, put on the brake to start. Silverberg says when it comes to supply, be patient and prepared. But if you're looking for a new car, my advice is to plan and make your decision four to six months before you would have anticipated actually coming to the dealer to take delivery. It's just, a, it's a different, um, different type of business right now, and um, we've adapted. 
As far as prices for used cars go, the president of the Colorado Automobile Dealers Association told me that, generally speaking, those prices are actually starting to drop a little bit. Overall, though, Alex, the association has told us in the past that the market could take up to a few years to go back to what's considered normal. Ooh, a few years. All yeah. right, we'll stay the course, Luis. Thank you. All systems go for the Artemis launch tomorrow, at least. Well, they're all go for now.